giving you all a chance for us to hear from you. So we'll go ahead and get started. Good morning, good morning, good morning to everyone here for our quarterly local government town hall meeting. And we're looking forward to sharing information with you from several of our uh, members of the state DIT, Department of Information Technology team. So we'll go ahead and get started and um, we'll move on to our next slide. Um, we'll show you what we're going to discuss today. We'll talk about our subscription and service rates. We'll also discuss the services and contract overview. We'll look ahead um, at the communication assessment project that we have going on, which directly affects the local government um, area. And also, as I stated before, we want to hear from you. So we'll talk a little bit at the end of this um, presentation. So on to our next slide, we will start with our subscription and service rate discuss discussion. Take it over, Janine and DP. I think DP is going to kick us off here, right? Sure, yes, ma'am. All right. Next slide, please. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is DP. I'm the CF at uh, DIT and uh, we'll be able to answer any questions you may have. You can interrupt me during the presentation to ask any questions you have now or you can wait till the end, whatever works for you. Um, as you can see the slide that every month, every customer gets an invoice around mid month, about 15th of each month. That invoice includes two parts to it. One, we call it as a subscription. Second, we call, we call it as a service rate. So any entity, if they're using any one of our services or multiple services, they have the operating cost, which is billed under this call service rate. Because in fiscal year 23, we took out the FTE portion, which is the personal cost, and we built that into the subscription. So now the service rate has the service uses portion only, the consumption of a particular service, and the subscription will have two parts. One will be the agency overhead and also the personal cost, which is coming out of the service rates. And I'll give you some examples what that entails on the next slide, please. So in order to come up with these rates, we have some statutory requirements which we have to follow. Out of all these, um, these requirements, which you can see, the main thing which, which is on this slide is the last one, which tells us that um, that state CIO has the mandate from legislation to update these rates every year and submit it to OSVM for their approval. So once we submit it to OSVM uh, for their approval, once that's approved, after that we try to publish it and let everybody know to implement those rates for every entity. But this year, the first time, we are trying to communicate as early as possible so that people can start preparing their budget uh, and other questions we may be able to answer. But, um, but the key here is that these are the submitted rates to OSBM and spending approval. So we're gonna share those rates with you today. Just give you some highlights overall at the agency level, what's happening and where it's going up and down. But again, considering that these are not approved by OSBM yet, so make sure we understand these are preliminary rates until OSBM approves, anything could change. Next slide, please. So as you can see in the slide that subscription and service rates submitted to OSVM, which we did on February the 23rd, a couple of weeks ago, and we have submitted to them telling them the subscription rate this fiscal year, which is the third column, fiscal year 25, is going to be total for the agency, for all entities inclusive, will be $71 million some change. Last year, the approved rate was 68 million some change, which was billed to every entity uh, over seven months because the because the but the, these rates were approved later on in November. Because of that, we left only seven months, so we divided the whole year subscription into seven months rather than 12. So 68 million dollars is the one which in the current fiscal year we are billing every entity based on their service consumes which I'm going to give an example next on the next slide once we go there, how we calculate these. So this year we are billing for $68 million. Next year for the subscription, it's going to be $71 million, which is slightly up, uh, which is about uh, $3 million up, which is about 4.38% than last year, which is current year, we can say fiscal 24. Uh, as I said before, this includes two parts, over agency overhead and also the operating cost for the services used by any entity. 
right side of this slide is tells you that service rates, if any entity use the same services, what they're using currently, and use the same level of service, then the rates will be impacted as stated on the slide. Again, it's pending OSBM approval. So overall for the statewide, we had projected for the physically 24 service rates for all services, 148 million some change. And the next year, if we keep doing the same services uh, delivery to all entities at the same level, our rates will be 146 million some change. Overall, it will go down about $2.4 million. If you look at the combined impact for the subscription, which is about 3 million up, and service rates going down about 2.4 million, the combined impact is only 535,000, uh, which is kind of about 0.25% compared to last year um, um, up, which is kind of very negligible. Again, these are based on projected or forecasted submitted to OSBM pending approval. Any questions on this so far before I move on how we calculate these rates? And I'll just ask that you kind of just pause to see if there are any questions, because this is hard information. Felina and I have been kind of learning a lot from Janine and, and DP as they've been putting some of this information together and having some of this collaboration with OSBM. Um, they've done an awesome job teaching us a lot um, and, and, and really um, seeing some of these aggregate um, numbers are, are pretty powerful. And then we have the specific numbers um, for, for the groups here, but um, this is a, a really um, a powerful and a good good set of aggregate numbers for our agencies across the board. But I don't see any questions, so I think I've given them a little bit of, of space to think of any if they did, but feel free to jump in if anybody has questions. Next slide, please. All right, here's the example if you're wondering how we come up with the subscription rates. Um, so I'm going to explain that and please feel free to ask any questions you have. So in order to calculate the subscription rates, as I said, there are two portions to it. One is called agency overhead, which is the indirect cost, which is kind of HR, finance, administration, and auditing, uh, the reasons like that, which do not have a direct cost to a service. And the second part of that is that in 23, physically 2023, we have moved the FTE or the personal cost from services provided to the subscription model. So that's the second piece. In order to calculate those two pieces, we have seen, let's say, pick example, let's say customer A is using these below services. In the right-hand side block, you will see, let's say the first line item, the, this particular customer is using a computing services and in fiscal year 23, the whole fiscal year, their bill was around $2,467. For that particular computing service, the whole DIT bill was 12 million some change. Then we took the percentage of that, which becomes 0.02%. That means we know this customer A have used computing services 0.02% for off DIT services as a whole. Then we took this number, multiplied with our FTE cost for that service. So 0 0.02 as the services used by any entity and our FTE cost for that service was $3.2 million. We multiplied that by that, then that becomes 652. So this customer will get a subscription billing for 652 for this service. They will not see the breakdown of subscription billing like these line items, they will see the total, which I'll explain in a second. But similarly, this first service I explained, they may have other services which are listed below, which is just an example. Similar way, we looked at the uses of each and every service for that entity. We looked at the total service cost for NCDIT to run that service operating only. We saw that percentage. Then we took that percentage, multiplied to the personal cost of each service to come to these numbers. Then we combined those at the end of the day, all of these billings for each line item, which becomes $18,000 in this example. The second part of the agency overhead, it's a tricky how to calculate the agency overhead. We know our overhead is $18 million, but we don't know how to bill to the customer. Then we know the billing to the customer was this amount, $670,000 total, which is this right here. 
So if this customer is using these services, their billing was this total $670,000, our total billing was this, that means they use overall, in bigger scheme of NCDIT, they used 0.27% of our services. That means they are gonna pay 0.27% total of our agency overhead. So our overhead, we multiply with that 0.27, we came out with 49. Now we can aggregate 18,000 plus 49,000 comes up to 67. So you will see one line item for $67,000 for, for, uh, for the whole year for, uh, for the subscription, then you divide that by number of months, depending on how many months that bill will be divided by. Like in this current year, we're dividing by seven. So next year, if OSBM approves the rates on, you know, earlier than that, it could be divided by 10, 11, five, it depends on when the rates gets approved. Based on that, we will publish this. Uh, we'll let you know how the billing will be affecting based on that. Any questions on these calculations? I hope it's clear what I'm trying to explain here. So um, DP, um, Nikki Gregory has a question and I think you just answered it. And I'm Nikki, I'm not sure if you got your answer out of what DP just said. She said, when you say move, are you implying that the services rate was reduced by the same amount, which I think the answer to that is kind of complicated because it's not yeah, actually- Yeah, I can answer that. Right, okay. Yeah, can so, answer. and Can you put she, the slide up? Can you support the slide up, please? And Yeah, there's a follow on question um, from her that it would be good. I think you yeah. were going to read it. Yeah, yes, sure. I was getting ready to read it. Is, is this calculated? She said also, is this recalculated each month or set for the whole year? And what about addition or cancellation of services? Yeah, OK, so if you can put the slide up so I can just point to the numbers also. So I think the first question was. Um, I'm sorry, which slide are you wanting to put up? Uh, the one what? example, which calculation example? Uh, I believe we just it, had it can, up. Can, can y'all not see that anymore? Yeah, I can it's, see it. It's, it's there, up. yeah. Okay, I'm not able to see it then. But anyway, that's fine. Um, yep, here you go. I can see it now. Okay, so I think uh, when we say we, the FT is moved from services to the subscription, it is not on one-on-one -on -one ratio. The reason it's not one-on-one -on -one ratio, the answer is yes, it has been moved. It should be one-on-one, -on -one, but it's not. The reason is, for the salary side, let's say if there was a hundred dollar FTE in, in in the service and it got moved to subscription, it's not going to be hundred dollar. That hundred dollar will be moved up a little because of the reason there's LI, and there could be some promotionals uh, and things like that. So there could be a little bit different. It's not going to be one on one. If you were paying hundred dollars before in addition to the operating cost, this hundred dollars is moved on subscription, but it could be a little bit higher. That's one aspect of the operating on that personal side. On the operating side. It's reduced by 100, but at the same time, the service rate could have gone up and down. And also, the uses of the service, the consumption level could also go on up and down. So there are various factors, but overall answer is yes. If it's moved from 22 physical year until when personal was part of the operating and moved in 23 in a separate bucket, yes, it is moved exactly as you stated from one place to another. But there are factors on each bucket which are affecting on operating side, the service level could have been gone up and down, services could have been added or dropped, and also rates could have gone up and down. On personal side, there's legislative mandate, ally, and uh, there could be some other factors which could be causing up and down as well. I hope that answers one of the two questions. Um, the, uh, that other question was if somebody drops a service, these rates are predetermined rate for the whole year for now, but later on down the road, we are trying to improve our processes and methodologies as much as we are learning from all of you. So your feedback will be really appreciative. Right now, like in, we are already in physical year 24, so we have no way of knowing how to bill a customer at what percentage. The only good data which we have is physical year 23, which is completed. So picked up that whole year, if somebody have dropped off a service or added a service, that's not being countered into the future billing until we come up with some other modifications to our methodology, which is not happening right now, but down the road, we are looking into those methodologies to, to be changed. One of the things which we are thinking to do, maybe I don't know how much it will be possible or not, or down the road. Again, your feedback is important in these factors, how we can incorporate those changes, what you guys are looking for. 
the question comes in, how would we know that how much you will be using? We can tell you how much you have used in last fiscal year or how much you are using in each month now, because we have, Janine is gonna go over those models uh, in a few seconds. Uh, there is a model which we have created, which tells you each and every entity upon request, we can produce that to each one of you whosoever needs that model to see how much their consumption for each service is. If you know how much you will be using in fiscal year 25 and so forth, then maybe we can look into some methodology where we can change our methodology. But for now, we don't have any way of knowing the future uses of any entity at any given time. Uh, we know our cost, projected cost, but we don't know how it's going to be affecting each and every entity at their levels for consumption and which and what services they will be using in the future. So, so we are going based on last fiscal year, which is the good data, and projecting the next year. Does that answer fully now, uh, those two questions, or is there anything I missed? Yes, you answered the question. Thank you, Vic DP. And, and we, we know these things very much, pretty in a pretty good way. Janine and I are pretty good with this to in and out of these things, at least what we have now. So please do not hesitate to ask any questions you have. Any other comments before we shift forward? Okay. All right, next slide. I think it's me now. All right. Yeah, it's so, all yours. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, DP. So as yeah. DP mentioned, we have been working hard to um, to right size our services and make sure that we are um, providing the best possible services uh, with efficiencies in place. So to that point for our 24-25, um, as DP mentioned earlier, we were able to reduce our impact to the agencies by about two, two and a half million dollars there. Um, with those, we wanted to show you the breakdown of where those rates are landing. We have about 195 rates total. Um, and so just under 200 rates, we were able to decrease about 107 of those. So over half of our rates, we were able to lower. Um, about 24% of those, we remained flat and just under a quarter of those rates increased. And there were only about 14 of the rates that went um, that increased, that increased over 10%. So even the increases that we did have were very, um, were smaller increases were compared to in prior years. And we purposefully and were intentional about making sure that we are paying for the things that will keep the services running, intentional about projects that are coming forward that we're able to uh, budget for now um, and making sure that you all are seeing either reductions or um, maintenance of those costs going forward. Um, so key service rates that we've been able to hold flat are our cloud rates, data protection, and the mainframe services. So that is key to ensure that we are providing the proper services. Some of these services are growing um, exponentially, some of them are um, staying flat, some of them we are purposefully holding to ensure that we have um, the right uh, references going forward. Um, and as DP mentioned, our subscription rate in, uh, increased from the prior year of about 4%. That did include the legislative increase of 3%. So we want to make sure that we're not just increasing our uh, subscription rates just because we're doing those things that are helping our personnel and, and the things that are required for us to do. So um, we will see those increases going forward, um, but we were able to, as he mentioned earlier, uh, only have about a $500,000 impact for all of our agencies. Um, and let's shift into next slide to talk about some of the slide, uh, the services that are most impactful to our local government agencies. Um, here's the top 10 list of those um, services that we have. We have our local telephone services, um, which uh, is about 1.4-ish million of total spend for, and this is spend, not rate. So total spend of the agencies there and want to just let you know how you're impacted for these rates going forward. So for local telephone, there will be no impact. That's one of the rates that we were able to hold flat. So what you're seeing now, um, as far as the, uh, as long as your consumption and uh, your, as long as your consumption stays flat, what you're seeing now should be what you're seeing going forward in 24, 25 for local telephone. Um, similarly, for point-to-point -point services, those will be um, held flat as well. So uh, just about $1.2 million across all the local government agencies. 
that will remain flat for um, the next fiscal year as well. WAN is a little bit of a different story. Right now that is top three in that we have there about four to 500 K of spend there. That is actually going to decrease. So you're, if you're holding your same consumption, you will actually see lower charges going forward. So that's a good story that we wanna make sure we were able to do some infrastructure um, increases in the prior year. So that has been set up and in place. And so now we're able to see some of those savings come through. Cellular services are one of the ones that impact most of our agencies. So that is number four on our list here. That one will remain flat for the next fiscal year. So it will be whatever your cost is for the local services plus a small percentage um, for administrative services on our side. And then long distance is uh, number five. That one has um, gone up just a little bit. So it's very minimal, about $4,000 across the board for the local government agencies. So that one will be a very minimal impact to you all. Um, structured cabling is one that remained flat. So that will be um, same consumption, should be a relatively uh, same price or same um, spend for you all going forward. Then the final ones, network security, they are uh, in still in our top 10, but they do have um, smaller dollars for individual services. Network security um, is one that will have a small increase. Uh, the impact will be minimal to most of the service, uh, most of the agencies. And then um, for toll free, that one uh, has actually gone down, and so we should see a, a lower impact to your services and to your to your agencies going forward in 24-25. And then for managed telephone and NCID, um, the managed telephone did go down. NCID is increasing, however. So if um, you have any increases or, or net new NCID expenses, you will see an increase there. Um, but again, it is a smaller, relatively speaking, um, impact to all of the local government agencies. Um, and there is a next, uh, if you hit uh, go forward there, there's another animation that'll pop up that shows the, the differences. So here's the all of the annual charges that we have there. And here you can see in dollar amount what those percentages are. Um, so about 40% of local governments are using our local telephone services. That point to point or end to end, um, getting the connections in and out of um, your local gov to our uh, net, our networking. I believe that's what that is. Um, WAN, cellular, et cetera. So I'll just pop that up there, let it um, resonate with you for a little bit. Um, if there are any questions on any of that, you can pop them in the chat. Um, and then we'll move on to talk about timing. And what I will say um, as we're talking about that, um, I know local government, um, you all are doing budgeting right now. So we will have some uh, communication opportunities. So if you need your submitted um, impacts, um, we're definitely making sure we are using the terminology submitted because we won't have those approvals from OSBM until later in the calendar year. Um, you can reach out to Felina and the BRM team to get individualized. We don't want to share that publicly here, but if you need individualized for your budgeting um, uh, exercises right now, you can reach out and, and, and Felina will be able to provide that information. I think I see a Janine, question. Yeah, yeah, we do have a question from Shannon sure. and a question from Randy as well. I'll read those questions. Shannon said, for budgeting purposes, given how local governments are legally required to operate, if the rate of consumption drops due to less customers buying from you, but overhead rates are the same or higher, then will the subscription fees increase for all customers still using the services? There's a second question. She asked, is there any way to predict the rate increases based on charges, excuse me, based on changes in the customer base that the locals can use to properly estimate rates during their annual budget process and approvals? Okay, let me uh, take the first section of that question first. So, okay. um, yes, there is a correlation between decrease in consumption and increase in prices or increase in, in services. So, if customers leave and we maintain the same amount of prices, the that um, does get spread out over the remaining customer basis. So, I think I'm answering that correctly. Um, so, if the rate of consumption drops, and less customers are buying, then the rates or the impact mm -hmm. to the agencies do go up. 
And Susan. Janine, um, let me, yeah, let me answer a little nuance to that. Um, so there's a, a service, it's not one that local um, gov actually uh, partakes of, but there is a service that we are deprecating um, for that reason that um, a major customer came off of it. And so we've been in discussions with the other customers that we don't think it's appropriate for us to continue to run the service because we can't do it cost effectively. Um, for them. And so um, we we don't want to leave them in a lurch. And so we're trying to work through um, some options next year. But part of what we're doing is being quite mindful. And um, some of the things that we have looked at is capping how much our rates can increase um, so that we're being very be, be careful. But at the end of the day, we are, as the statute states, we are a cost recovery organization, so it is a requirement for us to recover what our costs are. So if we do see a big decrease, um, and what we're seeing is uh, actually a lot more increase, um, particularly with cloud usage, um, I think we're going to, we will see um, uh, it go the other way um, so that there is more to distribute those. But yes, it is a function, as Janine said. I just wanted to help with that nuance. Yeah, thank you. DP, did second. you have a comment Actually, as well? Oh, go ahead, Susan. I was going to say, there's a second question. That was it. Yeah. I wanted to make sure. Okay. And so mm -hmm. then the second part of that, um, predicting the rates. Um, I, I think DP mentioned that a little bit earlier, trying to listen and understand where we're going. Right now, um, we're still in the exploratory phases of understanding how to predict those rate increases. Susan alluded to the fact that we are capping rate increases. So we're making sure that we spread out or try to predict how our costs are going to go so we can spread those increases out over a number of years instead of hitting it all at one time and having a large increase. So um, we're trying to work towards that. So we, this was the first year doing that. So that's why we're seeing that we don't have as many increases. So as as we continue to go forward, we'll try to um, to do that. So at least we can say your services will not go up above certain percentages. So that's where we're where we're heading with that. Anyone else on the panel want to comment on that? And I, and I I was putting a, I'll put something in the the chat as well. But just fundamentally, what we're trying to do and have really made some incredible progress. Um, this year is having a uh, predictable model. It's not just local government that needs that. It is all, um, it is a miss on our part. It is something that we are working hard to get to. Um, it's just a very complex thing. And so it's been harder um, to get to that. But yes, we are we are working um, to so that it's not a, as much of a guessing game because it's been up up and down too much. And so by suppressing that top end, it has really assisted in keeping it more um, stable. Janine, there's one more question. Randy said, will counties start being charged for NCID? Excuse me, NCID. Okay. Does anyone have the answer to that one? I, I'm not, top? I guess I don't fully understand the question. I would, um, if they're not being charged today, I don't think there's any change and there are yeah. some groups that don't have that direct cost. It's covered as part of some of the state agencies in CID um, uh, coverage. So I think that if you're not being charged today, I don't expect that that will change for any of those users. But we can make sure, Brandy. Thanks. That's all, all right. Janine. Thanks. OK, thank you. Um, so here we have on the slide, this is our typical, and I want to put in quotes, typical timing of um, how our rate um, approval packages and how the timing happens. Um, so as you, as we've stated, we've submitted our rates, um, both subscription and service rates to OSBM. Um, we typically don't get a certified approved um, um, approval from OSBM until sometime in the fall of the year. It could happen earlier, it could happen later. This timeline is based on what happened this past year. So we were we got approval in October, certification happened in November. So we were able to start billing new rates as of the, the, the December billing for November charges. So um, the subscription billing, as DP mentioned earlier, 
is not billed until we get that approval from OSBM and certification. So the annual subscription charges were divided by seven and you were charged that December through uh, the end of June this year. For our service rates, we will continue to bill at the old rates. So um, starting in July, you'll continue to build at the 23, 24 rates until that certification happens. Then um, in the December timeframe, there's a true up that happens where the new rates are introduced and anything that's been trued up from the month of July forward will happen. So that December bill or that first bill for the new rates will be a little bit different. So it may be higher, maybe a little bit lower, depending on most of the time it's higher. But uh, then going forward, starting the next month, that will be your, your monthly bill um, until the end of the year. So we want to make sure that we, we understand those two nuances. The subscription billing does not happen the first part of the year until certification, and then it's divided by the remaining month of the year. The service rate billing is billed at the old rate until certification happens, and then there's a true up in that first month, and then the following month, it is the monthly amount for the remainder of the year. So if there are any questions on that, feel free to reach out to us. I think um, I think we've talked about that in the past, but this is a great chart to, um, that was put together to kind of show what that typical timing happens. So if it moves up a, or back a month, then you'll see um, how that adjusts. All right. And next slide. So we just want to let you know, um, just communications, of course, we submitted our um, package to OSBM on February 23rd. So as you've um, heard us mention, We've been saying submitted rates this entire time. So until we get approvals, um, these rates could change. So we don't know what that will have, what will happen from an OSBM perspective. Um, so until we get those approved rates, we will continue to um, communicate submitted rates to that. Um, and um, so if you have any questions about your specifics, please feel free to reach out to Felina. Um, and she will be able to provide those specific uh, answers to you for your specific agency. And if there's any emails or anything like that you want to um, chat about. Um, I'm turning it over next, I believe, to Jamie and Felina if there are not any other questions. But they're going to talk about the local government advisory group. And if you want to participate in that group, please feel free to let them know. Um, and Jamie, if you want to uh, add anything to that, please do so. And Felina, jump in too. Um, we've been putting the slide deck together collectively um, for a couple of days, so it's been a team effort, but we do expect some additional email communications to be coming out um, that we're going to, but definitely Felina and I are both available to give specific information um, to agencies about their um, subscription or rate impact. And, and I just want to thank um, DP and Janine and Susan and Tori for making this, um, you, this a, a much better conversation. And Susan, and if I didn't say Susan, um, uh, just a much better conversation this this year. So um, definitely uh, appreciate all those efforts. And um, we're here to continue to answer any questions that come up. Um, so we can go ahead and go on to the next conversation. Unless, and Felina, you had anything else you wanted to add? No, you and Janine covered it. Um, we'll, we'll talk more um, in a couple of slides. All right. Well, we are on to the next segment unless anyone had any other questions or or thoughts um what we wanted to do um during this segment was to to give you all a little bit more information about some of the services that that our local government agencies either use today or have used historically and then let you all tell us some information about um what other types of services you're interested in learning about um we do have a lot of things in the portfolio um, and and we we definitely want to make sure that that we're um, talking with you all about the ones that are are, are helpful for your business needs and, and what your agencies are, are facing um, and working towards so Kelly if you could advance one animation uh, for me right now our local government um, agencies group really do um, largely leverage um, two sections of services from our portfolio our communication um, and collaboration services that include um, microsoft 365 um, and also um, a lot of our telephony services um, and then we also have some network connectivity services that are are fairly well uh, widely used from the 
that the local groups that goes back to some of the the WAN and point to point services that Janine mentioned in in the prior slides. Um, and so we those are definitely areas that um, the local government agencies um, provide or, or use from DIT currently. So um, I debt we have a little bit of a, a word clown that Felina has popped into the chat that we'd love for you to click on and and let us know what what else you would like to learn about um, from a service perspective um, as we kind of work through these. Um, we have about 10 agencies that um, use our Microsoft 365 service. Um, we've been doing some enhancements to it over um, the past years. We've added the capability for multi-factor authentication. Um, if any of the local groups that use it want to add that to their authentication protocols, um, it is one of the, the most um, widely uh, exploited threat vectors. So um, we've been doing a lot to, to improve some of that. The those aspects to the Microsoft 365 service. Um, we also have been adding some of the um, advanced capabilities uh, around email filtering and and spam filtering to make sure that we're 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 filtering out any any suspicious emails or or malicious emails before they get into um, the inboxes of the staff members. And then lastly, what we've done um, over the past year with Microsoft 365 is to negotiate um, the inclusion of the, the Power BI license into our G5 um, licenses. So that's been a great addition um, for the state agencies that um, are, are widely using Microsoft 365, but also for the, the group of agencies that, that currently use it at the local government level now. If anybody is on that uses the M Microsoft 365 services, feel free to pipe in, let us know what you like, what you don't like, what we could do to, to make it add more value. If you have any feedback at all, um, we've definitely, um, it's it's a very widely used um, service from the state agency. So we definitely expect it to continue to be a very widely consumed service within the portfolio. Um, and then um, I'll, I'll go ahead and kind of jump into some of the network and um, and voice services. If you could advance um, one more time, Kelly, um, the voice services that are also in that communication and collaboration area. Um, and these are a lot of the widely used services um, that have been been used for a long time within the local government group, um, our cellular telephone service, Centrex. Uh, long distance, um, these are very, very widely used. And, and so these are some of the, the top tens um, that, that ended up on um, Janine's slide in, in the prior section. Um, and the, uh, the, the kind of the for, foreshadowing of, of some of these services, um, we did mention um, the WAN service will have a, an increase, which is in um, our uh, uh, connectivity section. But for the voice services, um, these are, are actually um, feel, are, are actually going to have some changes as well. If you can go ahead and jump one ahead one more time for me, Kelly. Couple more times, maybe. <laughs> so this one right here um, is where I wanted to get is the this network connectivity. Um, this was one of the services that did increase um, for the agency. So I wanted to to make make sure everyone had a con kind of connection with with that um, from our service portfolio. But you can go ahead and go ahead to the next one, Kelly. Um, but this is kind of an important topic I wanted to get to asking, um, you know, this was a, a, a topic folks had already let us know was a, an area of interest in some of the surveys we've had out um, for prior town halls. And so we did want to bring this up as we talked about some of these telephony services. Um, there is a little bit of an industry transition occurring as our as the public switch network is sunset. Um, this is a network that's been in place for decades um, and is facing retirement as those technologies are advanced. And 
and this is a technology that supports um, tens of thousands of, of uh, our government users. So it definitely is going to be impactful for our customers at the state and local level. Um, it's going to necessitate that we all um, update network infrastructure processes and budgets um, to really kind of uh, uh, insulate the business as these <laughs> technologies advance. Um, <laughs> I see some fun talk about faxing in the chat. It's making me laugh. Um, but uh, we do want to make sure that agencies understand as 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 these um, technologies are retired, um, that there are, are going to be some expected higher tariffs around um, these legacy systems as the agencies remain on that. So it it is in, it's influencing what we're doing with our services and contracts. Um, and, and it definitely will be, um, you know, some support that we're here to offer and and provide to the agencies at the local level that that are um, are on some of these legacy services as well. So feel free if anybody has questions or or wants to talk about these um, uh, legacy services or tele telephony services, feel free to to jump in or a ask any questions that you might have. Um, we definitely are aware of it, and we actually have a, a project underway. Um, we're going to talk about a local government government project later, but we we actually have a services related project um, to to really create some more um, options for the state agencies and local governments as well um, as these technologies are, are retired. So um, I, I, we can go on to the the next topic, which is a tour of our contracts. And so I think felina has got another word cloud that she'll launch if you want to tell us anything about the the contracts and services needs you have. And I'm going to share these word clouds at the end. So we'll we'll show you what everybody said here at the end. Hopefully um, we have a couple of responses. Um, but our 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 services um, are are widely used. Um, the ones that I kind of talked through there on the previous slide, but our statewide um, contracts are also very valuable to a lot of the the agencies at the local level. Um, and so here I've put a, a, just a link to all of our state term contracts, and um, and also on the next slide um, I have presented a few that are very widely used um, by the agencies. Um, we have a, a statewide uh, 25, uh, a 725T contract, which is um, a SIP trunking contract. Um, and then we um, also, actually, this is a, a little slide that is outdated. I apologize. I must have been um, working on a different slide deck. Um, that link is outdated. But we have a another um, contract, which is the 925A contract, which is around some telephony peripherals that, that are also widely used. But um, these contracts are all posted on our website. Um, this one here that is highlighted at the top, the the um, 725T, it does has, have an expiration date of November 5th, 2026. This is one of the contracts we expect to have higher um, high, higher rates uh, uh, be negotiated as these vendors have the, the legacy um, tools that are still out and, and in use um, among the different agencies. So um, we wanted to share some of those dates and, and let you know that we, we're also working on on developing and some options and and we'd love to collaborate to understand your needs in these areas so so we can ensure some of our efforts are aligned with what you're looking for as well. You can go on to the next one, Kelly. Thank you. All right, the fun stuff. But yeah, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. <laughs> pause there and just um, let anyone jump in and and see if they would um, like any questions or, or uh, um, comments about the services or contract tour. Um, we wanted to introduce you to a little bit of, of the um, services and um, if there's anyone that that folks had had heard about or wanted to talk more about, we certainly are here to do that. Um, but we can jump ahead to to the comms assessment because that's a, Jane, an exciting Jane, let, topic. Let me let me add that it, my experience uh, in having um, some conversations with local government um, CIOs is that the supplemental staffing contract is something that uh, a lot of uh, local government CIOs were not was not aware of. Um, Kelly Gardner has put into the chat a link to the statewide 
um, IT contracts webpage, um, and that is there too. Um, that is very widely used. So make sure that um, you, you take a look at all of those, but that's one that I wanted to point out uh, as well, because, um, it, you know, especially at the height of when it was challenging to find IT professionals uh, to do some of the work that we have to do, uh, that was of great interest uh, to some local government uh, officials. So just wanted to add that. A great ad. Thank you, Tori. All right. Well, um. Alina, you want to take it away and we'll talk about the communication assessment project? Sure, sure. <clears throat> and Jamie, feel free to add anything that I um, missed with the communication assessment project. Um, You can go to the next slide, Kelly. <clears throat> Y'all, please excuse my voice. <clears throat> Engaged um. and want to <laughs> Invite, hello, oh, we want you to invite others to come to the meeting as well. Lots of good information, as you can see, is being shared here. Um, lots of um, new information um, is being shared, so we we'll hope that you are able to take it back to your agencies and uh, use it effectively. Um, save the date for our next local government town hall meeting, um, which is June 6th. Um, we hope to see you there along with many others. Um, I, I, we're able, we so far we've been able to make about 250 connections uh, um, since I've started um, in, in September. And we want, when I say connections, it's me people I've spoken with, I'm letting them know what we're doing, our new efforts, the things that we have going on. Um, so about 250, there are many more connections that we need to make. And that's why, as you see there, we have an advisory group um, that we've assembled. And some of them are on this call here today. Um, of course, it's gonna be um, interesting to try to reach out to 100 counties and 562 cities, towns, and, and, um, and other agencies agencies, but we're going to try our best to get to as many as we can um, so that they can get information as well. And the next um, bullet point, um, of course, you all know that you can reach out to me for any questions um, that you may have. If I don't know the answer, I can be quite resourceful and get you the information that you need from whoever you need to get it from. So please feel free to continue to reach out to, to me. I appreciate all of you who have reached out to me um, so far, and we'll continue that relationship. I think there's one more slide, one more um, bullet point. Um, as many of you may or may not know, I am on the Nickel Giza um, Board of Directors, um, which gets me um, close to our Nickel Giza Board is a very, very, very important part um, to our local government. And also, um, I'm in front of the um, towns and cities at our various meetings that we have with Nickel Giza. And I um, like to share as much information as I can uh, with our Nickel Giza board so that we can be informed. I like to be transparent and communicative with them um, so that the board knows what's going on with the state. If any of them are on the call now, they know that I'm constantly sharing information. And we want to get that information out to our locals as best as we can. <clears throat> Next bullet point, they get to the um, communication assessment. Yes, there we go. There we go. Um, so we do have a uh, community. There we go. Um, a communication assessment effort. Um, we have a lot of money in um, uh, ready to spend on this effort. So what is that? So this effort is a, a way for us to figure out any gaps. I may be saying it wrong, Jamie, but that's the way I have interpreted it. We're trying to find any gaps that we may have in our communication. What can we do to better communicate to our local government agencies? What are we missing? Um, how can we um, um, better put ourselves in a position to help our local government agencies? And that's what this assessment basically will do is to help us figure out what we can do better to communicate. And, and I personally, coming from local government, am very appreciative of this effort. I mean, we'll start before I got here, but I'm glad to be a part of it. Um, I'm acting as a project manager for this. I'm glad to be a part of it so I can help us to figure out how we can work better um, as a state with local government agencies. Um, Jamie, feel free to um, add anything else that you wanted to add, but I just gave like a high level um, of that assessment yeah. if you wanted to add anything to it. You did a great job. Um, we really do um, want this 
project to kind of build upon some of the great work that Felina has already been doing um, and, and, and Tori and, and DP as well, um, getting to know our local groups better, understanding how you budget, um, understanding how you need us to operate so that we can be a better partner, um, understanding that it's not just one local government group. There's actually, you know, some subgroups and and you work differently and need different things. And, and we want to understand that better so we can um, serve your needs better. Um, and so the project is underway and we were very thankful um, that our budget request was well received and, and got funded. Um, and so we're going to be actively executing um, this and Felina's got some of the activities up here that, um, that that are getting planned out. And so I'm just excited to help Felina. We're going to have a couple of other folks helping execute the assessment. Um, if you could click one more time, Kelly, I think we have a little bit of a, um, a we do expect that this project is going to create a really comprehensive knowledge base um, about you all. Felina has a great knowledge base. She's been teaching us all since she got here. And so I thank her for being that advocate already. But um, the project itself will will help us establish a, a more of a knowledge base to to work with you all efficiently and effectively. And, and we'll have a long term roadmap on, on how to do that for a while. So um, I'm excited about the project and I know it's going to be something we get to to work with you all on a lot over the spring and summer. Um, so I, I think you did a great job. Um, so that that's something we wanted to highlight and spotlight while we had some time with you all this quarter. Um, this and I did fun. did put some things in the chat, the word cloud. So thank you for giving us some insight on some of the services and contracts that would be of interest um, with the cyber. Uh, we do have a, a 920S contract um, that is on that contracts page that Tori uh, spotlighted that has some good cybersecurity um, and, and, and security uh, services. So I'll, I'll, I'll echo that link there, but um, we'll definitely be covering some of those topics as we meet again. Okay. You can go to the next oh, and slide, thank Kelly. Thank you for that, Su oh. for Susan. This that is absolutely right. I would not have kicked off a project from customer experience if that project was going to take the rates up. So, but thank you. We definitely. Um, uh, it was um, it was funded just for the goodness of of the relationship and the connections with the local government group. So. That's a good note. Um, so open and open it up um, to what we uh, what what you would want, um, what we want to hear from you. Um, anything that you would like to talk about um, and discuss here as as we're together this this quarter. Thank you to all of you who've already asked questions. We appreciate you. They were timely um, at that time. We appreciate you for asking at that time. But of course, um, here's an opportunity. You can come off mute if you want to, um, or you can type it in the chat if you have any questions for us. We are all here to answer any questions that you have. And any thoughts on things you would like us to target for the next quarterly meeting? Um, we definitely want to make these value added sessions and um, and and be able to to make sure the content is 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 aligning with some of the things that you want to hear about and learn about. Anything you didn't hear today that you would like to hear about? Anything you heard about today that you didn't care to hear about? <laughs> Would you like for Jamie to sing a song? <laughs> yeah. I can tell more jokes. Just say no. Um, so I will say um, we do have seven minutes um, left, and I'm not going to talk for seven minutes, but I will say you all know that you can reach out to me or you can reach out to Jamie, either one of us, um, and, and ask your question if you don't if you prefer not to ask them here, um, I'm always available for you to ask me a question. Um, even when I see some of you in May, if you have questions, um, feel free to stop me and ask me questions at that time as well. And I'll be there too. I'm getting registered for the conference. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I think that's it. Um, thank you, everyone, DP, Janine, Tori, Susan, Jamie, everyone for joining us. Oh, wait a minute. We got some, um, oh, that's Tori, <laughs> some state yep. term contracts. Okay. I'm using 
issuing a statement of work. Yeah, oh, okay. I just wanted to clarify that like 920S okay. does require um, statements of work to be issued to five uh, vendors, for example. Um, so it, it is somewhat of a, an additional com um, competitive bid process. And one of those five, if there's a hub vendor, a historically underutilized business uh, in that category, then one of those five would need to be a hub vendor uh, that you send that bid to. But um, it, it, it still should be a quick process. Uh, you typically know what you're going to do and what you're looking for. Um, and so issuing that statement of work um, to a limited number of vendors uh, gets you there pretty quickly. So, but the terms and conditions have been pre-negotiated, so that makes it easy. Right, right. <clears throat> Thank you, um, Shannon, um, Dr. Shannon Tufts, for joining us today and for um, providing insert um, um, information and for um, asking great questions. Thank you. Um, uh, Randy's on our board as well. Randy's a past president. Thank you, Randy, as well. So thank you all for joining us. We appreciate all of you for joining us, and we will see you on June 6th or in May at the conference. Thanks, everyone. Thank right. you. Take care, everyone. Thank you.